I know you you said the men have um, more glycolytic fibers, fast twitch fibers. Women have more of those oxidative or um, slow twitch fibers. So that would be one of them. And I'd love if you could just explain that a little bit more, how it how it actually serves us practically in exercise. And then on top of that, what are the major differences between men and women as it relates to exercise? So if we look at the morphology differences, when I talk about oxidative, that's our endurance fibers that use a lot of free fatty acids for fuel. So it's the, the slow twitch, per se, not a lot of power-based work. When we talk about glycolytic, this is our very fast twitch, uses carbohydrates, CP, ATP, the very fast energetics. So this is why we see men produce more power than women. And when we start looking at how we're training them, we see that women don't need as much recovery between rests, or should say we don't need as much recovery between sets and exercise because our endurance fibers can recover more quickly than our glycolytic fibers. And the flip side of that is women need to concentrate on doing more power-based moves as well as high intensity work in order to stimulate the glycolytic fibers that we have to keep them because we rapidly lose them as we age. And the important part to understand about glycolytic fibers and lactate production is really critical for brain health. So we start to see sex differences in Alzheimer's and dementia and plaque development. And we see a shift in brain metabolism, especially as women get older, But for women who are producing lactate through their life, we see less of an impact on um, the metabolic switch for brain metabolism as they get older. When we talk about in the moment, if we're looking at uh, like an EMOM, something to that effect, women can eke out more reps every minute, but it won't be as fast as men. And we can see when we're looking at doing several rounds of an EMOM, that women towards the end will do much better than men because they have had the time to warm up and their muscle fibers are firing. So we look at like the third round of a five-minute EMOM and the women are like, great. And the men are like, Ugh, I'm done. <laughs> and it has to do with the fueling differences. So if we take that into context and look at how are we training and what are we doing, We might want to rethink how we are scoping rounds and reps for women versus men and noting that that's more of a a top end. Of course, any movement is good for both sexes. So when we start getting into the nuances, that's where we want to start looking at, okay, what's training history? What have you been doing? What do we need to improve? But in general, there is this misstep that women are not getting the same type of training stress as men when they do the same thing. Okay. So in CrossFit, we have, we have an intended stimulus of a workout and the goal is maybe to be within a time frame window or maybe a, a certain amount of work where they could be four to six rounds as an example. And how we get around with it, and I'd love your thoughts on this, how we get around with it is that our program differs by degree and not kind. So we keep everything the same, but we modify volume or load of time sometimes um, or distance so that we can get not an absolute power, but this relative intensity that gives us that, that adaptation that you're saying, like putting that stress on the body. Is that kind of what you're saying with this, how you would modulate it? Yeah, exactly. And part of, I get frustrated when we're looking at some of the programming where we look at, Oh, I love it. Hit me. You know, I'm like, Hmm. Why do women have to have a shorter distance for rowing or running? No. Or why is the wall ball height for men different than women when it should be based on just total absolute height, right? So there's things that come up where I'm like, hmm, not quite right, but I understand what's going on here. Yeah. Yeah. The CrossFit, I think back in the day, there was no split. There was no difference at all. It was like mm-hmm. one way. Okay. It was the one thing. And then more recently, it's not, I don't even know if it's recently, it might've been a bunch of years now that yes, the calories like will go down or the, the distance will go down and the, the loads, if the loads went up, it would be hard for women to maybe do what was as written, if you will. So they, they did the 70% split. Yeah. Um, but I, have you, do you watch family guy? I have to get this quote in and this is the time. Mm-hmm. 
No, I don't. I don't, re- I don't really watch it either, but I've heard this quote on the interwebs. It's, it's like, <laughs> who are we? Women. What do we want? We don't know. When do we want it? Now. <laughs> and that's how, that's how I feel when I look at the whiteboard. I'm like, okay. Do I, do I want to be a woman today or do I, you know, I want to go less reps here, make it easier for myself? No, um, but it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I do credit CrossFit with bridging the divide. Like mm-hmm. in 2000, I remember Sydney Olympics and looking at some of the sports that women were not involved in because they weren't supposed to be or weren't allowed in yet. And that was about the time CrossFit was starting to come out. And it was the very first sport that didn't have a divide, didn't say women do this and men do that. It was So it's a, a very pivotal point in fitness industry history where here is suddenly a sport that isn't dividing up between sexes, that everyone can possibly do the same. So I credit CrossFit with that. It's great because it then it opened up so many things to the world, right? It opened up heavy lifting for women. It opened up Olympic lifting and movements and Metcon. And women are like, I can do the same thing as men. It was great. I love it. I, and thank you for saying that. I agree. And it, and it leveled the playing field too, where you walk into a CrossFit gym and there is no hierarchy. There, it's, <laughs> it's, you're based on your ability and you do the thing. Um, and that I, yes, I love it. And it empowered women. I mean, women changed Absolutely. their mindset too about how they felt about their body. Yeah, exactly. My daughter, um, by the fault of being my daughter, uh, <laughs> has grown up. So, well, she turns 13 next week, so she might not like me talking about her. But she's grown up in the environment where I've been very conscious to push strength over anything else that's in social media. And she does strength training twice a week in a high performance gym. And she'll come back and go, Mom, I want a butt and quads like the women in the gym. I was like, Yes, because they're the rugby seven. So they're really strong. Oh, She's like, yeah. I want to be powerful like them. 